Such Podcast, episode 115, take one. Hi, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I am Kendall. And I am Janelle. What was that? Just rock on. Oh, I thought it was Quiet Coyote. I was thinking Quiet, quiet coyote. coyote. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm, of course. And always... Oh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Hell yeah. That was good. Good times. Good times. Four on the floor. Are you four on the floor? Four on the floor. What's that? You didn't have that in your no. school? It's like when you got to, you know, the boys and some girls too would be rocking back in their chairs. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There's always like that one kid who was just oh, yeah. constantly <laughs> doing it. Probably had ADHD. That was me. I was, was going to say, were you that kid? <laughs> yeah, I four definitely was that kid. Yep. Four, so on the four floor. legs on the floor. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it should be floor. six on the floor though. True. Yeah. Four legs and then your two legs. Yeah. So screw that. Four but, the, so really, when you were rocking, you still had four on the floor. Because you true. had two chair well, legs, two human legs. Normally, it was just two chair legs. And then your feet were up on the How desk. The, oh, shit. Because mm-hmm. you, you would do a little, little like. But well, then they got smart and started connecting the chairs Wait, to the tables. Wait, this is so random. But this has this happened to any of you guys in school when you would wear leggings when your butt itch really <laughs> Yes. Actually, <laughs> oh my gosh. What? <laughs> yeah. Your butt cheeks. Yeah, they, they it's really bad. Like, like in the like chair? Really yeah, because of like that plastic. Some type of like static electricity stuff that would happen where leggings, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> so Damn. Itchy. I didn't experience really? this. Really? Oh my God, it was so fucking oh, yeah, itchy. I still experience like a little bit of itch sometimes. Like but itch. Sitting on a chair for too long wearing leggings. Honestly. Like plastic, like, or plastic chairs. <laughs> Yeah. Thinking back, I don't think leggings were really a thing when I was in high school. Not even like, it was like when I went to college. Not even oh, like yeah. the galaxy leggings? No. Oh, shit. No, shit. it was no, sweatpants. Was... Oh, okay. I don't think I ever wore leggings. Well, in well, even in, in fact, college, I had itchy butt. I remember yeah. starting to wear leggings when they first came on the scene, really. And Victoria's Secret had that giant like piece of fabric that yeah. you fold over. over. Classic yoga pants. Yeah, that's when we I started. Had, like, all these designs. I still have yeah, like a few 2011. Pairs, and I don't know why. I like can't get rid of it. I remember I one pair like I had too. vividly. It was like it was it was like a it was pink and yellow and white, and it had it was like um little squiggles on the Ooh, on the band. Sexy. I can see them. Cute oh yeah, I had Ugh. some that were like cheetah print with like oh, yeah. bedazzled, oh, bedazzled oh, pink. pink. Yep. So then it would like hurt, it like itch. That would hurt. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you pulled them all the way down, then you're sitting on that in class. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely experience that. Anyway, <laughs> they... uh, what's your name? Janelle. <laughs> the butt <laughs> I don't think you ever even said that. <laughs> Janelle okay, the it is here. Kendall and Janelle. Sydney Corelli, we are all here. Charlie's here as well. Roll call. Yep. Roll call. <laughs> That's right, people. Welcome and back, folks. We have another fully loaded episode of the sesh here this for you guys fully today. Loaded. Yeah, we've got a lot to go over. Oh my yeah. gosh. There were so many topics this week that once again we had to kind of narrow them down Correct. and decide what we were going to talk about. Um we and are not nothing short of spicy topics since the new year. No. Last year we were like kind of scraping together, like, all right. Yeah, things got kind of dull for a going while. on. <laughs> there wasn't a lot, but now it's like yeah. holy shit. Twenty twenty three has been off to the races. <laughs> off to the races, folks. Um, off the races. Yes. So <laughs> today's episode is sponsored by Mind Bloom, Base, Carev, and Zogdoc. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Um, but let's get into our first spicy topic yeah. here, which is spicy because it's Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of butt stuff, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in Taco Bell news, which you guys know we have to report on this. And you may not have heard about this story because this is local to us here in Colorado. Right, baby. We've been covering some local Colorado stories. That's right. We're like nine news up in this bit. Okay, <laughs> this is much. so wild. So a man in Colorado was hospitalized after getting sick from eating Taco Bell, a taco mm-hmm. that allegedly contained rat poison. Dun, 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 dun. And we got kind of scared. Oh, I was oh, like, oh, God. shit. This is Might not be good. Careful. I've been to this Taco Bell. Oh, have you? Shit. Really? Mm. Oh yeah. <clears throat> good thing you made it out alive. I know. I could have been the next lost victim. Well, oh. there's more to this story, friends. So, on January 15th, officers responded to a disturbance call from a Taco Bell regarding a customer in the drive-through and the Taco Bell employees. The customer originally ordered several soft tacos and a soda, but when he pulled up to the pickup window, they tell him that the soda dispenser was not working and dude was pissed. Beyond. He threw a big fit. Which side note, you ever hit up a Taco Bell to get a Baja and it's like water down as fuck? Yeah, not good. 
not fucking good. Not good. So this customer becomes angry and he requested a burrito in place of the drink. <laughs> and the Taco Bell employees kindly tried to tell him that they could not do that. But this customer continued to argue with them until he was given the burrito in place of the drink. <laughs> Pulled right. a real bitch fit. Then shit starts getting juicy. Around 7.50... Six, seven, seven, <laughs> seven fifty. Officers were dispatched to a hospital on a report that a male patient was admitted to the hospital after telling hospital staff that he ate food that had rat poison in it. Damn. Yeah, not good. So, once the officers arrived to the Taco Bell customer, he told them that once he ate his tacos from Taco Bell, he immediately felt a burning in his mouth and began to vomit. At the hospital, deputies saw the taco that he had taken a bite out of and saw a greenish gray substance in the taco. Dude, you sound like literally someone from the news right now. This is true crime. Is really funny? <laughs> it is. Lab you- tests confirmed that the presence of rat poison was in fact in the taco. Uh oh. So the customer gave deputies consent to enter his home and retrieve the remaining food as evidence. Taco Bell was immediately closed. It's a crisis. <laughs> and the sheriff's office and investigators and the crime scene investigators, straight CSI, were called into Taco Bell to process the fucking scene. And over the last several days, investigators have been, been going through Taco Bell video and found no evidence mm. that any of the employees were responsible for placing the rat poison in the food given to the customer. Mm-hmm. They could not find an ounce of rat poison in the whole fucking building. Mm-mm. Okay? So that's when we're like, hmm. What the fuck? Shady. Okay. So, investigators have now been trying to contact this guy and can't get a hold of him now. Mm-hmm. He has disappeared. Mm, they even went to his house yep. on the 19th and asked to speak with him, but no answer. He's probably in the dark hiding under his bed. <laughs> He's like, no, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, because <laughs> lying like this is a big fucking problem. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so at honest, this mm-hmm. time, there is no evidence that employees at Taco Bell actually put the rat poison in his food, and investigators are still unable to figure out how it got in the food. But in my opinion, it sounds pretty obvious. I think homie got mad about the drink dispenser. He wanted his damn soda, so he decided to seek revenge on this poor Taco Bell. That's right. And now he's going to pay for it. Do not disrespect a food establishment like this. Yes. That is such. They had to close down all the employees. They got a bad work. work. The fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, and... I'm sure so many people saw the original story. We were all, I got it from like three friends that morning. Yeah. Yep. My nanny, another friend, you all sent it to me. It was like the first thing I woke up to in the morning. I was like, oh God, I don't know if I can ever go to Taco Bell again. Now I'm scared. Mm. I had like a little bit of a midlife crisis when I heard the news too. Yeah. And so I'm sure a lot of people only heard that part of it. And then of course the the follow-up here hasn't gone quite as viral. So Mm -hmm. many people are still under the impression that this guy got rat poison in his food. (laughs) And I mean- Case isn't closed yet, so we don't fully right. know. But, don't know. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead hiding? and give my opinion that if you're hiding and not answering calls, you're looking guilty. You're looking real guilt. Trying to pull a Wendy's chili finger situation. <gasps> oh, yeah. Fun times. I forgot about chili that. Chili finger. I did a thing. video on that, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, I wrote the outline for it. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that <laughs> shit. Yep. Yeah, that's disgusting, though. Mm-hmm. Pretty nasty. Dude, rat poison, bro, that is really bad. That's got to hurt really bad for you. Imagine poisoning yourself just to seek revenge on a Taco Bell. <laughs> well, he, I'm sure he was hoping that he could, like, sue them and get some oh, cash. Yeah. But what an idiot. Because yeah. obviously there's cameras. Right. You know what I mean? Do you really Everywhere. think you're going to be able to do something like this? I Plus, mean, how stupid are if people? You saw, if you saw the poison in the taco, like, he said it was, like, grayish, whatever. Yeah. You ate it? Yeah. That's on you. <laughs> yeah. That is definitely on you. Yeah, seriously. I was going to ask, can um, restaurants even use that kind of stuff in their restaurant? Like, are they even, mm-hmm. even if there is a rat problem, like, are you allowed to how? I feel like that's one like, exterminator. Yeah, I'll have rat poison. I don't freaking know, bro. I don't know how that works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There might be regulations about that. Uh, did you hear, side note on Taco Bell, more Taco Bell news? They are coming out with a Baja Blast hot sauce, people. What? Yeah. Like Baja Blast flavor? Correct. Like blue? Yeah, look at this shit. Uh, that's peculiar. Peculiar. I can't imagine that tasting very good. They say it is going to be a mix between habanero with hints of sweetness from tamarind, mango, and maple syrup. So it's going to be like a... Mm. That sounds gross. 
But are they going to bring the Enchirita back? That's full-time? all I give a fuck about. Me too. Why are they not? Do- I don't understand what the problem is. Why mm-hmm. can't you just bring it back full time? You have all the ingredients for it. Let's be real. Are you through all of your frozen ones? No, I still have a frozen one in there. I look at her and I'm like, <laughs> should I eat it? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you're, being, you're being serious. You have, you have frozen Enchiritas in your freezer? Yes, I yeah. do. She stocked up. Yes, I do. She was smart. I'm I had jealous. two. I ate one. Mm. Don't look at me like that, Carly. I don't want to see any sort of judgment. <laughs> no, on your I, no, no, face. no, no, no. I'm sorry. I didn't I mean to like, judge. I'm that's smart. Yeah. No, it is jealous because no. you don't have frozen Enchiritas. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a little bit. I'm gonna break into your house and steal it. No, 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 no. She's in a safe in my freezer. <laughs> She's in my safe. She's in the safe, bitch. You can't touch her. That's like an artifact. You'll have to wait until it actually comes I could back sell to it. have it. <laughs> sell it on eBay. If any of you listeners want to buy my frozen Torito, hit me up. <laughs> Best offer. I'll send it to you. Does it still taste as good? I don't know. I've I. Well, have, did you oh eat yeah, 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 yeah. But it was, this has been in my freezer now for two months. Oh my God. <laughs> you should probably just eat it. Hell yeah. Let's go. Okay. What if you go to like Taco Bell and ask for like a gallon of their red sauce and right. then order mm. and then order a burrito from them, like one of their regular burritos, like a bean burrito, mm-hmm. go home, put it in the little dish, yeah. nuke it, melt some and cheese. Then, exactly. Yeah, you can totally make it at this home. This is why I'm like, why can't y'all make this? Well, for years when they first took it off the menu, they, they would, would still make it. They yeah. would. Janelle and I would go all the time and ask for it and it was no big deal. Yeah, but no then all deal. the like, you know, generation have changed yeah. of employees. The, the new newer employees. people came, they didn't know how to make that shit. I was like, do you guys make intrudos? Oh, no, we've never had that on our menu. I'm like, wrongo. Do you some research on the Taco history. Bell history. <laughs> <laughs> you work here and you don't know the history? You don't know the history of this establishment? Fake fans. Oh, damn. Boy. Now I kind of want Taco Bell. I haven't eaten all day except for this random banana almond butter smoothie. Mm. So, yeah, gross? it's an interesting story here. This guy, we'll let's see, he's looking pretty fraudulent, but time will tell. Hopefully, fraudulent. there'll be updates on this whole story. He's a liar. Mm-hmm. You know who else is a liar? I was just about to say, you know who else is a fraud? Liar, liar, pants on fire. George Santos. Congressman. Mm. This guy. This has been wild. But also hilarious. Wild, but also hilarious. But also, like, you're... And scary. You suck. He's and dangerous. And I will tell you why. Yeah. Guys, I am so excited about this new sponsor for the sesh today. I've been wanting to work with them for so long. If you have never heard of Bass, you are seriously missing out. Bass was actually created by actress Shay Mitchell, which Kendall and I are both huge fans of. And her mission was to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories designed to help you travel effortlessly while still looking fashionable. And Bass has thought of everything you could ever want in a piece of luggage. They've got 360 degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, built-in weight indicator, washable bags for your dirty clothes, and all the interior pockets you need to keep organized. I am obsessed with the Weekender bag. It is the perfect size, it's not too big, but still manages to hold tons of stuff, and I love all the different storage compartments that it comes with. It even has this compartment on the bottom that is separate from the rest of the bag that you can put your shoes in, which is so genius. And every piece is made to look better with miles, so you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. And Base has over 30,000 five-star reviews. Whether you're packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security lines, Base has your personal items covered. And right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting Base travel.com slash sesh go to base travel.com slash sesh for 15 percent off your purchase that's b-e-i-s travel.com slash sesh okay so let's just start from the top here folks recently george santos has been in the news for many reasons which we will go over but the first reason we'll be going going over is the fact that there had been a photo that has been resurfaced of Congressman George Santos dressed in drag under the name Kitara Ravachi? Ravach, Ravachi? I'm not exactly sure how um, you say that. Uh, anyways, if you're not aware, George is a U.S. representative for New York's 3rd Congressional District. And George is the first openly gay Republican congressman. Which was good. <clears throat> yeah, but... It's terrible because he has been criticized for his alignment with Republican leaders who say drag queens are grooming kids and supporting Florida's don't say gay bill. So while he is is an openly gay man and fucking mind blowing, mind blowing (laughs) as an openly gay person, you are supporting people who hate you and want to silence you and educating people in school. You're sick and twisted that I can't even wrap my mind around people like that. That's wild as fuck, honestly. It's like Caitlyn Jenner. Literally gives the same Very vibes. Very Caitlyn Jenner vibes, yeah. Anyways, um, 
So this is where kind of things crack open here. <laughs> On January 18th, a MSNBC news reporter, Marissa Cabas, or Cabas, came out and tweeted, I just spoke by phone with Eula Rochard, a Brazilian drag queen who was friends with George Santos when he lived near Rio de Janeiro. She said everyone knew him as Anthony, never George, or by his drag name, Kitara, and confirms this photo is from a 2008 drag show at some t- some beach in Rio. Now, look at this picture here. It's George mm. and Uela. He kind of looks like, um. why am I spacing on her name? Alaska woman oh. from years ago. Oh, Sarah Palin? Yeah. yeah. He looks like Sarah Palin oh, there. yeah. I kind of get that Sarah vibe, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whatever happened to Sarah Palin? What's going on with her? Oh, I think she went on a, that singing show, right? Oh, good for her. Oh. The um, Masked Singer. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> she was on there. Love right? her work. Wasn't she? Wait, can we pull it up? Yep. Oh, there she is. Look at her. Queen. Sarah. Cute outfit. Uh, what nice. was she? Oh, she was the bear or whatever. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> not as creepy as Caitlyn Jenner with the oh oh, oh my god oh, dude that oh, was oh. fucking awesome <laughs> I forgot about that what the fuck was that shit man. incredible times oh, what was the song again that she sang <laughs> um, oh, oh 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 right oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know oh 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 oh, 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 oh. Fuck. Oh, the outfit was great though anyway oh, it was tick Talk on, on the, the clock. clock. You did turn my speakers <laughs> up tonight. I'm a fight. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, so uh, Eula said that she became friends with George when he was cross dressing back in 2005 at the first gay pride parade in Rio de Janeiro. And according to her, three years later, George competed in a drag beauty pageant. So obviously, this is big fucking news because. Yeah. Because George is a fucking liar. George, so George. So, well, this came out and George hadn't, you know, confirmed. confirmed or denied yet. Because then on the 19th, a video surfaced appearing to show George discussing himself participating in drag shows. Let's go ahead and have a little listen here. Mm. Now, this is reportedly taken back in 2005 at a pride parade in Rio suburbs. And it shows George speaking in Portuguese. So they have subtitles. I will try to read, read you the subtitles. Okay. He says, I need sunglasses and my makeup is messed up in this way. I can't. He's, he's wearing sunglasses. So he's saying my makeup is messed up. It's very disorganized. Not too many people here in the service. You know, there's no man carrying the flag. But we're full of trans. We're all men. I want you guys, I want you all to carry the flag here. He's like, carry the fucking flag, bitches. Um, he's talking about this specific location where he was at. Um, he says the event is very organized. I liked it. I had to step down from Trio because Trio is very small, and now I'm here with everyone. Yay! Woo, he looks like a fun time. I know. He says, "Yep, looks how pretty he is." He's talking to this guy next to him, and he says, "Thank you, bye." And he walks away. There's also a video of what seems to be George dressed in the same outfit from the original picture that we showed. Let's go ahead and um, play that little clip here. Hey, 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 there's George. Steps out in a red dress. He's wearing a fly. Looks like a wide outfit. Yeah, good outfit. Looking great. Feeling himself. Shimmy into the camera, kind of. Smiling. Great jewelry. Honestly, I think he's giving like a... Um, so this is where things get interesting because george has completely denied or at first was denying that he was once a drag reformer and that these pictures are him he says it's not he calls these allegations categorically false categorically categorically false. False. i love that when people go hard saying nope 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 nope, <laughs> nope. a bunch of lies it's a bunch of lies that's right. Uh, yeah, he actually posted this tweet. Yes. The most recent obsession from the media claiming that I am a drag queen or performed as a drag queen is categorically false. The media continues to make outrageous claims about my life while I am working to deliver results. <laughs> I will not be distracted nor phased by this. I'm more like, I would like to just ignore, ignore this entirely. Ignore, deny. Please just, just forget about it, people. Yep. So it gets better, though. <clears throat> 
After this, it was discovered that nearly 12 years ago, George appeared to have confirmed that he participated in drag shows when he was a teenager living in Brazil via a Wikipedia page. A Wikipedia page with the username Anthony DeVolder, George's alias, wrote that he, quote, started his stage life at age 17 at a gay nightclub and with that won several gay beauty pageants. Now, this wiki biography was last edited on april 29th 2011 and this user's birth date matches up with george's birthday which is july 22nd 1988 mm. this user also supposedly talked about his quote career in show business and claims that he had part in hannah montana and the sweet life of zach and cody <laughs> which is clearly lies that's such a weird thing to lie about. I know, so weird. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, well, turns out this guy is full of lies. On January 21st, George arrived in New York, and of course, the media was there to greet him and questioning him about all of this. And there's actually a video, so let's go ahead and watch that. <laughs> and this video just came out uh, a couple hours before we started recording this, so Monday. She's the, still hot. Yep, the 23rd. Boom. They ambushed him at the airport. The saga of freshman Congressman George Santos continued today as the man oh. accused of lying about everything from his finances to his work experience <laughs> Which we'll get more into in here. New York amid growing calls for his resignation. Bye bye, George. I got artists. I went. <laughs> <laughs> artist. George Santos <laughs> heckled by someone at LaGuardia Airport where he landed this afternoon Chanel's before being hammered issues. with okay. questions over his increasingly checkered past and claims checkered he's been past. hiding out in D.C. to avoid his constituents. And I have spoken with the voters. I've been in the district the whole week. I've been taking constituent calls. I've received federal grant applications. No one cares, dude. The we want to and know about the drag the stuff. People. Santos never broke stride Talk as he about was the followed by a handful of reporters <laughs> deflecting and dodging. Oh. Was your mother at the World Trade Center on 9 11? Look. Look. Yeah, this isn't how yeah. you conduct an, uh, an interview. Santos refused to answer questions about <laughs> whether like his mother was shit. inside the World Trade Center Trash. during 9 11, a story the congressman has repeatedly told, and one which a researcher told us isn't possible. <laughs> She was in Brazil for years before and after, so she could not have been in New York on 9-11. It's just one more lie on top of all the other lies, but this is somehow that much more significant because it's in, in, for New York, it's a seminal event. In a week of extreme ups and downs, Santos had his Twitter account suspended and had to deny claims he stole thousands of dollars meant for a veteran's dying service dog. On the other hand, Santos was just approved to two House committees and reportedly has the backing of House leadership. State Assemblyman Charles Levine also governs in Santos's district. It's heartbreaking. This is just the complete exercise in cynicism. He is their Frankenstein. He is their creation. We now have to figure out how to exist with him. <laughs> in one of his latest oh tweets, God, Santos Santos. posted about immigration and claimed Democrats don't want to fix it. So yeah, super interesting. We will talk more about the 9-11 lies in a sec, mm -hmm. but um, George finally confessed that he did, in fact, dress in drag. Mm -hmm. He said, not a drag queen. <laughs> I was just young and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, like, you yeah, having fun? Me. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. No, he looked like he was having a blast. There's no, Honestly. There's nothing to be ashamed of here. Other than the fact that you were fucking Ooh. shaming everyone else right. and spreading all this, you know, just bullshit about the drag community and trans people and right. adding to all the hate and the violence mm -hmm. against this community. And then meanwhile, you were partaking in it this whole time. Mm -hmm. How can you say those things with a straight face, you fucking coward liar? Boom! Fucking Piece coward shit. liar. I honestly hate people like this. It really does give me such Caitlyn Jenner vibes. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, once again, someone who could be used to yes. do so much good for the uh, LBG, LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I would love to have, you know, a former drag queen in Congress, but not when they're this motherfucker lying around. Lying around. And that's not the only thing he's lied about, folks. He's had some hella lies, too. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> hella, hella lies, lies too. <laughs> Dude, okay, so, like, we were watching just now the news clip. Oh, hey, Sadie. He just jumped in my lap. Hey, girl. Dude, she's been so loving hey, lately. Girl. Like the news clip said, he, back in the day, reported that his mom was in the World Trade Center on 9-11. And his mother's immigration documents show that she was actually in Brazil at the time of 9-11. Completely lying. Lie. Yeah. Yeah, what weird ass lie. shit. 
Dude, he's pulling like a um, Alicia head. Remember her? No. You don't remember her? What? Oh, yes. Covered her in my yes, channel. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Tanya head. Tanya, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think her real name is Alicia, but she was lying about her name. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yep. Uh, she she talked about being a 9-11 survivor, had a whole story, was running around with um, other survivors, yep. trying to spread awareness, fundraise. Turns out she wasn't even fucking there. I know. Crazy. Weirdos. She's just like that's, George. That's so weird. What a weird thing to lie about. So Very disrespectful. So I mean, horrible. on a real note, just mm -hmm. horrific. I mean, yeah. What is wrong with you people? Also, back in like 2016, 2017, George was accused of stealing money from a GoFundMe used to help a homeless veteran raise money for his dying service dog. What a fucking freak. What is wrong with this guy? The Who veteran does said that? George helped raise 3000 through George's pet charity in order to help save the dog from a life-threatening stomach tumor. But then the veteran said that he never got the money from George and his dog died six months later. And of course, Ugh. George has completely denied the story, calling it fake. He said, it's shocking and insane. My work in animal advocacy was the labor of love and hard work. Over the past 24 hours, I have received pictures of dogs I helped rescue throughout the years, along with supportive messages. These distractions won't stop me. Absolutely real. GoFundMe blocked him yeah. from their website mm -hmm. after this. Dumb fuck. So all of this obviously is coming to light now. He's also accused of taking an expensive scar <laughs> an expensive <laughs> scarf from his former roommate, uh, Gregory Mori, and wearing it to a Trump rally. <laughs> so he's a liar? He's a thief? He's a thief. Oh, Horrible. A fraud? <clears throat> this guy's a piece of shit. And also this month, two New York Democratic lawmakers, Richie Torres and Daniel Goldman, filed a formal complaint with the White House Ethics Committee against George. They say he violated several ethics laws and requested the House panel investigate whether George broke the Ethics and Government Act by failing to file timely, accurate, and complete financial disclosure reports. Mm, right on brand. Richie and Daniel claim that George's financial disclosure reports for 20 and 22 are sparse and perplexing and have contradicted some information included in the 2022 financial disclosure and confirmed that the 2022 financial disclosure failed to disclose other information. Wow, that's a lot of disclose. <laughs> disclose, 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 disclose. <laughs> Uh, it says, quote, given the revelations about his biography, as well as the public information pertaining to his financial disclosures, Mr. Santos has failed to uphold the, uphold the integrity expected of members of the House of Representatives. And there's also um, a complaint filed with the Federal Election Commission that accused him of illegally using campaign funds for personal expenses and more scarves, mm -hmm. of course, <laughs> <laughs> and providing false information about the source of his campaign donations and expenses. Uh, the complaint was filed by the Campaign Legal Center and questions whether $705,000 in contributions to his campaign improperly came from a corporation or foreign national. Yikes. Why you always lying? Always Why fucking lying? lying. Stop oh, no. fucking oh, lying. Stop <laughs> fucking lying. So he needs to be done. He needs to go. Yes, yeah, so everyone it. is like, dude, you need to fucking retire. The Democrats are pissed at his ass. Um, the Republicans are probably pissed yeah, too. Yeah, I think they're definitely like, <laughs> like oh, you're making shit, us look really not bad. Great. Ah, uh, Georgie Porgy, pudding pie, kissed the girls and made them cry. When <laughs> yeah, remember that little rhythm or rhyme? What the yeah. fuck even was that? <laughs> yeah, all the little rhythms are very weird. <laughs> By the way, Bessie, you got a little um, lipstick on your teeth. Oh, that's been my thing lately. I had a video <laughs> recently where it was in that for the first five seconds. Hell yeah. Did you get mm -hmm. any comments on that? I forgot. Uh, uh, I'm sure. Yeah. I think there was a few, but they were mostly nice. No. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it's nice. Hmm. Anyways, this guy's a fucking joke. And it's just so <laughs> disturbing that you, George joke. when, you know, these pictures come out, <laughs> you completely deny it, uh, obviously, because of the fact that he has been in favor of people who, you know, support the um, don't say gay bill mm -hmm. and calling trans people like dangerous mm -hmm. to the youth. Um, so obviously he's not gonna be like, oh, but I was <sighs> dressed as a drag queen at one point. He should have never gotten into politics. He should have just stuck with the drag thing. I agree. He was should looking good. I saw this fucking tweet. Oh, like I was reading one of the tweets about this and one of the comments was like, and what season of RuPaul's Drag Race was he on? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can go on there now. Oh, mm, I don't think they oh. want him. No, no, no one wants him. him. That's the thing. Now, no one, no one claims George. George, you need to just and give your go to Mars at this point. And give your fucking roommate his scarf back, you yeah. asshole. <laughs> and give this veteran his three grand from his poor dead dog. <laughs> Sorry, uh. that's so fucked up. 
I know. Like, what know. on earth? No, and then, like, not laughing, but it's just, like, so bizarre oh, that this dude mm-hmm. is, like, such a fucking fraud. In totally. every way in possible. Every Lying way. about his mom being in the World Trade Center, yeah. and then you're literally representing New York? Yeah, that, that is fucking that loser. That is appalling. I mean, dude, imagine what else this guy has hidden in his closet, for real. Like, all of the lies that he probably has that we haven't even scratched the surface on. There's probably so much more that he's gotten away with. He's like very comfortable lying. He's literally tweeted out about his mom being in uh, Tower 2, I believe. That's so fucking And was like fighting with someone and was like, wow, my mom was in there. It's like, (laughs) dude, really? Oh my God. Really? so bizarre. As a grown ass adult to be lying like this? Liar, liar, pants for hire. Um, Yeah, so he's a big fucking liar. Yep. Trash. Georgie, Georgie, Georgie. So yeah, probably the end of his career. I'm thinking. Yeah, you think what's he it better do? be? Yeah, good luck ever doing anything ever again. You giant joke. <laughs> Likes you better as a drag queen for giant sure. You looked like a fun joke. time back then. Yeah, he did. Shouts out to his old times. <laughs> to his old times. So many of you have heard me talk about ketamine before and how it was incredibly life changing for me, and I mean it with all my heart. I recommend it to everyone. When I first started ketamine treatments, I was dealing with serious depression and anxiety. I was barely getting out of bed. I was also dealing with chronic health issues and pain. And I found ketamine treatments. And boy, did it change my life. And I mean that. And I love seeing that ketamine is becoming more and more accessible to people. And that's why I'm so excited that Mindbloom is sponsoring today's episode of The Sesh. So Mindbloom is the leader in at-home ketamine therapy for people who need a new way to treat their anxiety and depression. They combine science-backed medicine with guided treatment plans that are both affordable and fast-acting. To begin, you take Mindbloom's online assessment and then schedule a video consult with a licensed psychiatric clinician. And if approved, you work with Mindbloom on your specific treatment plan and you'll be mailed a customized kit right in the mail, complete with medicine, a journal, and treatment materials. And after only two sessions, 87% of Mindbloom clients reported improvements in depression and 85% reported improvements in anxiety. It's time to enter your next chapter in mental health and well being. You can achieve transformational outcomes with Mindbloom. And really, guys, I cannot recommend ketamine enough. I finally got my dad to do ketamine treatments and it's already doing wonders for him. I just really can't say enough good things about it. So right now, Mindbloom is offering our listeners $100 off your first six session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash sesh using promo code sesh at checkout. Just go to mindbloom.com slash sesh promo code sesh for $100 off your first six session program today. That's mindbloom.com slash sesh promo code sesh. Okay, so in other news, Alec Baldwin, you guys. So when we did our psychic predictions episode, um, there was a prediction about Alec, right? Said that things are going to get tough for Alec Baldwin because as more information comes to the surface, he might not look so innocent. But after doing some research on it, we first, well, like I said, it was incorrect because they reached a settlement, um, said subject to court approval for our wrongful death case against the producers of Rust, including Alec Baldwin and Rust movie productions. As part of that settlement, our case will be dismissed. Oh, this was from 2022. Yeah. So it technically didn't come true in 2022, but it has oh, come it true now. A, ooh. Yeah. They were like a month late. It. Yeah. I don't think anyone really saw this coming. Um, yeah. But things are not looking good for Mr. Baldwin. The district attorney for Santa Fe County, Mary Carmack Atweiss. Altweiss. Anyway, she said that Alec Baldwin, as well as the movie's armorer, Heather Gutierrez Reed, will face two counts of involuntary manslaughter for the fatal shooting of Helena Hutchins. Both Alec and Heather face up to 18 months in jail and $5,000 in fines if convicted. So this is pretty shocking news. I did not know that anything else was going to happen with this case. Mm -hmm. Um, So the film, if you didn't know, I'm sure most of you know, um, they were shooting this movie Rust out in like the desert. Mm -hmm. And... Alec claims he was handed a gun that was supposed to be a prop, a prop gun. And I re- if I remember right, it's called cold. Like the gun is cold. No idea. I think there's cold and hot. Oh, yeah. Something okay. like that. Anyway, he was okay. under the impression that this gun was not loaded. And he 
shot Helena Hutchins, who is, I believe, the cinematographer. Yeah, she was. And killed her. It was a horrific yeah, situation. So sad. Incredibly sad. Um, this woman was very talented, known as a lovely person. She was a mother. Just a heartbreaking story. So the film, film's assistant director, David Halls, has entered a guilty plea to a misdemeanor charge of negligent use of a deadly weapon. He will have to spend six months serving probation, which in my opinion is not enough. Despite charges against Alec Baldwin, lead actor in Rust, production will continue. How? And it's expected to start filming again this month. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah, so weird. And it's so disrespectful, too. You'd think the whole yeah. thing would be scrapped after that. Who's going to fucking watch that? It's just so weird. Yep. I never thought they would have continued doing this. Is, and, I, know. I wonder if, is Alex still going to be starring in it? Is he still mm -hmm. going to be acting in it? That's yeah. the too. I, yeah, that's the plan. And How? he's like a producer in, on it, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's his movie. That's insane. I know. And it's just... Like I said, just so disrespectful to the family to imagine like after losing her to see the ads come out for this and to see, you know, yeah. I'm sure it won't do very well if it does come out. But anyway, this time around, they say that the set will have updated safety measures in place. I would fucking hope so, mm -hmm. including on set safety supervisors and union crew members. The filming will also exclude the use of working weapons, live ammunition, including blank gun charges. They are not sure where the film will be shot once production starts up again. Um, there's possible California locations, maybe. Mm -hmm. Not exactly sure what they're going to do there. But originally, the movie was being filmed just outside of Santa Fe in Bonanza Creek Ranch. However, last year, the production said returning to New Mexico was not an option. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I would think. So, yeah, what do you think? I mean, I was reading a bunch of stuff that his, like, odds of going to jail are pretty slim. Really? Yeah, that it probably won't happen. Um, I do think it's a bit strange that they're, like, continuing to film right away. Um, yeah. What about the armor? I think, if anyone, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there, someone died here. Yeah. Someone has got to be held accountable for this. I know. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely true. I agree completely. Should Alec Baldwin take the hit? I think he should get something. Yeah, I think there should be some repercussions for this. Yes. Okay. And also, I did not like the way that he went around on this little innocence, you know, press tour, tour yeah, and just poor me. And, it, you know, I just feel like he has not taken full responsibility for this. I mean, clearly he feels bad. He looks like it. He looked mm -hmm. pretty... But, but not bad enough to stop production. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it didn't affect you that much. Why would you ever want to return to this? Can't even imagine the trauma, even on his end, or any of the crew wanting to pick this back up. It is so bizarre. I agree. Yeah, the starting of it, uh, the continuing of it is very weird. Mm -hmm. Unless they're trying to pull the whole, like, oh, well, this is what Helena would want. Like, she was passionate about this project. Like, we need to finish it Okay, for her. but you don't know that. Maybe she would not want that at all. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, I don't even know if they've said that. I'm just speculating. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. But yeah, I mean, it's giving me like, um, have you ever heard of like cursed movie sets? Yeah. Like yeah. it's giving those vibes. And what like, are the real bullets? That's the only thing that I don't understand because I was oh, actually yeah. going to tell you, I looked it up. The cold is that is when a gun is loaded with blanks. Mm -hmm. So he thought it was cold, but they also were saying that he didn't double check like in that, you know, Mm -hmm. Have them double check it or, yeah, you know, he just grabbed it. Now they're saying that's going to be the responsibility of actors to actually see for yourself and have much more education on firearms when they're used on sets. I think they sh I think so. I mean, yeah, I just think you it's think strange. Already in place. Oh, like, yeah, I was going to say, I feel like it should have already happened, though. I say, I just don't understand how the bullets would have ended up in there when mm -hmm. it was a set gun in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, hopefully this, you know, this case will bring some of those questions to light. Because there's still just so much we don't know. It doesn't make sense how all of this happened. Yeah, exactly. I'm reading an article here from USA Today that legal experts are doubtful that he will go to jail. Mm. Um, well, at the very least, I think going through this stressful trial and all the publicity is... I'm glad that that's happening for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. There was recently an interview of... Um, I think her name is Hilaria Baldwin, his wife. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. You're not going to ask me questions. I'm going to tell you. Moments before this, cameras were up in her older children's faces. And then... 
carrying their newborn daughter in her arms, an emotional Ilaria decided to gather the mob of media in a gaggle outside of her New York home. I want you guys to realize that we have seven kids. And you being here to escort them to school and to be there when they come home is not good. So on a human level, you guys know I'm not going to say anything to you. You know that. So please leave my family in peace and let this all play out, okay? So let my kids come home and you stay away from them. Because they ask me, mommy, what, like, what are these people doing? And it's a very hard thing as a mom to try to explain. So please, go home, because I'm not going to say anything, and Alec is not going to say anything. Your lawyers have said something about the charges. So I definitely agree with her that, you know, the paparazzi need to back off at least from the kids. It's totally. an awful situation for them. But here's what I've learned about her. Apparently, this has been going around for a while. She is being accused of faking this accent because oh, God. she has always claimed to be from Spain. Turns out she's actually born and raised in Boston. Shut what? up. And her name is not Hilaria. It's fucking Hillary. <laughs> I swear. It's true. I was looking this up last night. Another Absolutely. Liar. Yeah. So. <laughs> God damn it. Now everyone's just like, this is really going viral right now. People are questioning her. Hilaria. 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 She's like, yeah, I was, <laughs> everyone's calling it hilarious. That's fucking awesome. So, Born Hillary Lynn Hayward Thomas. Okay, let's actually see this. There, wow. Here's this clip. Six times where Hilaria Baldwin's accent slipped between Spanish <laughs> and American. You know, it feels different. It really feels different. But I didn't think it was going to be different, but it feels quite different. What's so. the thing that surprised you the most? Um, I think just the fact that it feels different, you know, I, we, we like to say husband and wife a lot. Yeah. yeah. I come husband and I say, husband, where are you? He took me out to Montauk and he said that was as close as he could get to Spain, to my family and to Rome because we really like Rome as well. And um, he got down on his knee and then I don't remember the rest because I started crying. We have very <laughs> few ingredients. We have tomatoes. That is so wow. bad. Oh. Um, how do you say anything? Cucumber? Cucumbers. Oh my it's god. How do you? And I think part yeah. of it is that I'm in shape before I have a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I stay active well, this is her? when I'm pregnant. Yeah. Well, and it's 2018. I'm not trying to stay thin. I'm just trying to keep my circulation going and stretching. And Bro. Oh, she sounds like a completely was, different person. Well, oh, you know what? I, I feel like all of our children were semi surprises in a good way. Good surprises. Like positive surprises. You know, I have what a four weird kids, thing but you have to, lie to be about. able to treat each one as if they were only a child sometimes. <laughs> So I have to have my individual time with each one of them. Yeah, maybe that's why you wake up so early. You say, I want my mommy time, huh? Okay, Hillary. It's so, so Hillary. Yeah. Hillary. Well, that's great. <clears throat> that's yeah, hilarious. so that's just a little tidbit there. Kind of interesting. I was wow. reading about that last night. It fell into a little bit of a rabbit hole. Just Wow. Imagine <laughs> could you could you go <laughs> your life like Pretending to have an accent? No. And why would you change your name from Hillary to Hilaria? <laughs> because it's because it's more spicy. Uh, clearly, she's <laughs> wow. just spicy. Very, very That's cringe. Very, very cringe. Although I do feel bad for their kids. This is a shitty situation for them. So we'll see how this plays out. Um, we'll keep you guys updated if anything else comes out, which eventually it will. So very sad. So I have never been good at taking vitamins. I always want to take vitamins, but I get overwhelmed because I don't know what brand to use or frankly, which vitamins to take or how often. And that is why I'm so excited about our new sponsor for the sesh, Care Of. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. Care Of's ingredients are thoughtfully sourced and backed by research so you can feel good about what you're putting in your body. It's so easy, guys. All you have to do is hop on their website and take a short, in-depth quiz for a personalized, doctor-backed recommendation, taking the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you. Care of's daily vitamin packs are great for on the go and are made of plant-based compostable film, so you can stress less about your impact in the environment. Remember how I talked about how the vitamin aisle is so overwhelming? I feel like I never know what exactly I should take. Well, that is why I love Care of. Their quiz was so easy to take. 
and they gave me a list of everything that they recommend I take. I also love the fact that in their quiz, you can actually talk about specific health goals you have, and that will be factored in to the different recommendations. And Care-of has got a great deal for our listeners. For 50% off your first Care-of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code SESH50. That's right, guys, you can get 50% off your first care of order. Go to takecareof.com and enter code SESH50. We are now going to get into talking about Andrew Tate. There have been quite a few updates and things that have come out and leaked since we last talked about him. And just a trigger warning for you guys, this is very, very upsetting. So please proceed with caution if you're going to continue watching this part of the episode because this stuff is really horrific and honestly has affected all of us. Disgusting. What are you doing? So, you My know, dog you really wants to be that, here. I think this sound's going to pick you up with a little scratchy. Joe, do you have anything to say? Yeah, fuck Andrew Tate. <laughs> Why is this happening today? You never want to be on the show. Now you're yeah, here. Yeah, she could give two fucks usually. We She's bring like, her up Listen, she leaves. <laughs> this is a whole new year for me. I'm a star. Oh, Charlie. Oh, I'm so sorry. I think you tapped his wing on the no, table. No, it's because I accidentally... T- he's very sensitive underarms. And if I touch them the oh. wrong way, he screams. You want to be on the very table. Sorry, okay, Charles. we're not going to do that, though. I'm Listen, dogs, sorry. get it together. Yeah. <laughs> this is a professional production. This is a professional production. Okay, right. anyways. Um, so kind of where we left off here. Andrew and his brother, Tristan, along with two Romanian women, Andrew's girlfriend and so-called assistant, Georgiana Na- Naghil, Naghil, I don't Naghil. Know, uh, and Alexandra Luana Radu, who is a former... Romanian policewoman who allegedly quit her job to pursue a webcam career. They were all detained in Romania or in Romania and charged with human trafficking and rape on December 29th, 2020. On January 14th, Romanian authorities seized 15 sports cars, 14 designer watches, and cash in several currencies. The total value of goods is estimated to be $3.9 million. And if prosecutors can prove they made money through illegal activities, including human trafficking, the assets could be used to cover expenses of the investigation and compensation for victims. After their assets were removed, Andrew tweeted this the same day, saying, Anyone who believes I'm a human trafficker is genuinely a moron. Anyone smart enough to understand the American system is unfair would be mind blown by the injustice of the Romanian system. Which is absolutely laughable, considering this guy has basically confessed to all of this in different various interviews and footage that he's put out. He has denied any and all allegations against him and demanded immediate release. However, the demand was denied, and on January 20th, it was announced that Tate's 30-day detention will be extended until February 27th, which makes it seem as though they are still trying to figure out exactly what's going on. They've got to have pretty sufficient evidence and have very serious, you know, evidence against him if they are holding him continuously at this point. Right. Um, Yeah, an appeals court last week rejected Andrew's demand for release after prosecutors argued that given their financial capacity, the brothers could evade investigation, leave Romania and settle in countries that do not allow extradition, which is totally possible and something I could see them doing. There's also this leaked video of Andrew Tate saying some horrific things about how he's basically frauding a bunch of the women that he works with in his business. And... This video has been hard to track down. We've looked all over for it. The only place that I can find it is this lawyer reacting to him. All right. So this is criminal lawyer Bruce Rivers Mm -hmm. breaking down this leaked video of Andrew Tate. Take a look. You're effectively taking girls, teaching them how to make unlimited money from home and then making sure they give all to you. So you're making sure that you're teaching girls how to make a shit ton of money. Right off the bat, he tells you his main goal is to have them work for him and him get all the money. Then I realized I had about five girlfriends, all smoking hall. And females are an asset. Females are an asset. Why do you work for me so we spend more time together? Or if you're doing what? So I have a webcam business. Oh, I don't want to do that. So, okay, I know you don't want to do that. But listen, come and let's have a meeting. Let's just talk about it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Fine. But let me explain it to you properly. In fact, I'll bring one of the girls who works with you, your Bolton bitch, the new girl, you go out for fucking a nice dinner. Your Bolton bitch is the one who does the selling. You don't do the selling. The girl has to hear it from a girl. And this is where your Bolton bitch has to be trained. That's why I said it's so important to have a good first girl. Remember Glenn Maxwell? That was the girl that yeah. recruited for Jeffrey Epstein. Almost identical to what he's talking about here. I had a separate phone with all my girls' guys in that phone, and I kept control of it. Don't let your girl have this, because if your girl ever runs off and leaves you, you don't want her to have an address book of all the guys she can get money from. 
another aspect of control. You don't want her to have your client list because mm -hmm. if she has your client list, she can leave you. So you've mm -hmm. got to restrict her information. It's a systematic method of control to control these women. You want her to leave and go, well, I don't know the account. I don't have the password to the account. I've never set it up before. I don't know how the banking works. I don't have any of my guys' phone numbers. I have nothing. And that's why they don't want to leave because they're like, oh, well, he has everything. I need him. I have to stay with him. He has everything. It's important. I'm telling you, it's a very important element, that control. This is so classic manipulation. Mm -hmm. You look at abuse cases. Why do people not leave? Because they feel like they can't. Because, because they're, they're trapped. They're trapped. Their abuser has all the control over them. They are, quote unquote, nothing without them. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's kind of Andrew Tate's whole thing is he finds these young women who are vulnerable, promises them they're going to come be, a lot of the times he tells them he's going to be, they're going to be his girlfriend. Yeah. And tricks them into oftentimes coming to Romania to work with him. And then once they're kind of in everything and they've established this life with him, he takes on the full control and they are trapped. There's, you know, they, they're they scared. There's nothing they can do. He is everything to them. He provides them with, you know, food, shelter, and they're stuck. That control. And they will leave. If you don't have every aspect of the control. Tax is also yep. another important element for controlling your going. You're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. You need to tell your girl that you're paying the tax because girls are lazy and girls are stupid and girls don't understand how taxes work. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm going to pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. Now that allows you to do two things. One is another control element. See how that control is, is a recurring theme over and over and over again. If I do it alone, I have to deal with taxes. Taxes are complicated. The control element. And he doesn't have respect for these women at all because he thinks they're stupid. It allows you to pay her a smaller percent. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they made, I'd give them three and I'd keep seven. They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. If they say, why is it 50-50? I'm the one who knows what he's doing. I'm the one with the knowledge. I'm the da 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 da, -da. Shut the fuck up. Go online. Print out some tax forms. I used to do this all the time. I used to print out some random tax forms and say, yeah, sign here and sign this. What is it? It's for the tax. You want to pay the tax or not? Throw them away afterwards. But they, they think something's happening. Something real is happening. Nothing's happening except like me getting rich, bitch. Nothing's happening except for me getting rich, bitch. That's what he just said. So he's taking another 20% of what would have been their earnings, saying he's paying taxes, but he's not paying taxes. His words. That's fraud. Force, fraud, or coercion. It is absolutely mind-blowing to me that Andrew claims to be this genius. He thinks he's so smart. And here he is fucking admitting to fraud on video. Stupid fuck. So many he's crimes. so stupid. And for him to call others stupid is laughable. This guy's a fucking idiot. And ugh, anyone defending this guy, something is seriously wrong with you. If you have seen this stuff and you are still defending him when it's coming right out of his stupid mouth, Disgusting. Reevaluate your whole it's life. It's despicable. And, you know, we got a comment from someone last week that was saying that they were concerned because their boyfriend had recently started being an Andrew Tate fan and she can't convince him that he's bad. And honestly, my honest advice to you is to leave that person. I agree. That is so toxic and scary and puts you in a dangerous situation. Anyone who looks up to this guy in any capacity has their morals so fucking twisted. The amount of men defending I him. I just looked on Twitter, just at recent tweets. So many guys. And it's on, now it's the Matrix. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> blaming on the Matrix. Yep. Right. yep. It's all just a scheme to make him right. look bad. Right, right, right. Everyone's against him. Yeah. You it's talk coming about, right out of his mouth. Talk about fans. There's this video right here of oh, all these fans swarmed at the center of Greece's capital chanting free top G. Top G. Okay. Bunch of fucking losers right there. It does look like a bunch of kids too. That's yeah. what's so scary is there's so many kids that mm -hmm. follow him. Mm -hmm. There's literally teachers coming out and being like, I can't control my students because like half the boys in my class are basically being like, fuck off, I don't have to listen to you, you're a woman. Which is so scary considering the younger generation is supposed to be more open-minded when it comes to things and aware and to see to see young men in today's day and age. I know. 
looking up to this guy. If that was my son, I would be horrified. Horrified. I mean, I would shut his ass down on every fucking level. This guy is just absolute trash of the earth. Back on January 14th, there was a Vice documentary released called The Dangerous Rise of Andrew Tate. You guys have got to watch this. on YouTube if you look it up. Mm -hmm. Watch it on YouTube. It is mind-blowing. His whole they show his whole compound, which a lot of the areas he was like, Oh, that's classified, that's classified. You can't go if in there. If you try and go in that, you'll be met with security. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, imagine that. And you know what he's got going on in there. Yeah. Like and he's he walks around with a fucking sword. He has this giant <laughs> sword sitting around and he says, Yeah, it, it really helps because, you know, if a woman is is complaining to me or whatever, and I'm I'm paraphrasing here, you just point the sword at her and tell her, bitch, go make dinner. Yeah, he's like basically saying that you all men should have a sword. <laughs> Sorry, <can't> even... <laughs> it's so ridiculous that it's oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> but didn't didn't he say something about how like about like the masks and stuff and like how like this? I mean, he didn't say this, but like I mean, he made it seem like the sword doesn't like protect him against COVID. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he did say something yeah. about that. <laughs> Stupid fuck. Yeah. So this reporter Matt Shea takes viewers inside Andrew Tate's secret society and compound. And also interviews many women who have come out against Andrew Tate. And that's more towards the end, those interviews. Um, warning, they're very sad. We can't play yeah. them because they'll get copyright, but they are mm-hmm. extremely upsetting. It's, it's very, very upsetting, triggering for sure. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's worth a watch. If, I do too. If you feel like you can handle it without... Um, you know, being affected by it majorly, which is possible. So watch with caution. But I mean, I found it incredibly interesting. And I have to be honest, I had never, I had seen little things of Andrew Tate throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I'd only heard of him probably six months ago, maybe like August. Same. And I would see little clips and like, okay, this guy's a major douche. He's a misogynist. But the more I've seen about him and watching all of these leaked clips and this documentary just made me realize what a fucking monster this yeah. person is. Like danger to society. Totally. He's he's horrific. And yeah. it makes it even more frightening that people are standing up for him. I mean, where are... This is 2023 and we have people defending basically, in my opinion, someone who is pretty close to Jeffrey Epstein, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that lawyer made a great point that when he said bottom bitch, it's very similar to Ghislaine. It's Ghislaine, right? Mm-hmm. Maxwell. Ghislaine, yeah. yeah, very similar to her. So this is crazy. So he started this thing called Hustlers University. <laughs> and he claims it's the biggest <laughs> online university in the world, has more students than anyone, any online university in the world. There's over 110,000 students in the Discord server paying monthly subscription fee. Yeah. Wow, it's made... At least eleven million dollars in just one month. Yeah, that's in October. To say that Mm. is insane, because he also has like this scheme where if you basically recruit someone to use your link, then you get paid. So it's like an MLM. Yeah, it's literally like a fucking MLM. How could this be the biggest online educational platform? There's no way that that's true. Well, maybe it is. If it is, that's very scary. It's only fifty dollars a month. Um, and you think about it, you don't have to apply to get in. There's no prereqs, I would assume, to get into this. Um, so, I mean, I think pretty much anyone can join in. It says it's designed to appeal to young men who want to be their own bosses and work from home. Real World Vows members will learn how to build a large income at speed from online instructors, each of whom, uh, have raked in more than $1 million in profits to their respective industries using the same methods that they teach on the platform. BuzzFeed here claims that while it's unclear how many of these accounts are still active and currently paying the monthly fee, an ad on one of the sign-up sites featuring Tate claims there are 168,334 enrolled students, meaning at least $8 million a month. Holy shit. Wow. A month. So this guy, Blake Phillips, 22 years old of Norman, Oklahoma, was part of this. And he said he paid for two months of real world tutelage. And he recently gave this quote about um, Andrew Tate being held in Romania and his arrest on human trafficking and rape charges. Said, I don't believe he did that shit at all, which this guy works at a Dillard's department store. Said, there's not even a slight doubt in my mind. All the people around him are respected individuals. (laughs) 
what? <laughs> and they say he didn't do it, so I don't believe it. Oh, okay. Well, he said he didn't do it, so I don't believe it. Also, Hustlers University had a rebrand back in November, I want to say, and now it's called The Real World. Okay, so that's, I got it now. Right. The Real World. <laughs> Oh, so it goes into the Matrix. The yeah. real world versus oh, the fake world. Oh, boy. Mm. I mm -hmm. see, I see. Mm -hmm. He's a clever man, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So clever that he films himself confessing to crimes. You guys, there is nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment and expecting to be the center of your doctor's attention while you're there. And then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and other places to be. That is the worst. Instead of listening to you intently and asking how you feel, helping you along, the doctor is checking the clock. On ZocDoc, you can find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Plus, you can read the reviews and see if they are actually worth your time to see. And when you're not feeling your best and you're just trying to hold it together, finding great care should not take up all of your energy. And that's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. And you can book an appointment with just a few taps in their apps and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. So go to ZocDoc.com slash sesh and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours, which is great. Again, that's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash sesh. ZocDoc.com slash sesh. Going back to what we were talking about in this documentary, two people come out specifically and give interviews um, discussing their experiences with Andrew Tate. One of them, uh, her name is Amelia. This is not her real name. She has been, you know, she's using an alias name because um, she's afraid that people who support Andrew Tate will harass her, which I'm sure would happen. Mm -hmm. And she basically talks about how the two of them started going on a few dates and then one night they were laying in bed and started to make out but all of a sudden um andrew just stopped and laid back and said to amelia i'm just contemplating whether i should rape you or not this is very similar to what other people have said about him and what he has said himself there's a clip that we'll play later mm -hmm. that reminds me of this she says that in an instant, he just flipped a switch um, and became a completely different person. He then jumped on top of Amelia and started to strangle her. And the more she acted like she didn't want it, Andrew would get more aggressive. In her interview, she was like, please stop. I don't want this. And at one point, she kind of just had to, in her words, give up because she was so scared. He says, quote, according to her, allegedly, quote, I love raping you and watching you let me while still debating if it's a good idea or not. Discuss what the f I can't even read this out. I know, it it's unbelievable. literally sick to my fucking stomach. I just mm -hmm. want to throw the fuck up. It is horrific. He even owns up to being a monster. He said, Monsters are monsters. When you're under my control, I do whatever I please. And so there's also been this leaked voice note that um, someone recorded. And I'm not sure if this was Amelia who recorded this. Um, I don't I've been trying to figure this out. So there are voice memos that he sent to her. Okay, so it was Amelia? But, like, she didn't record it. He literally recorded himself and sent them to her. Oh, yeah, really? Like voice recording. Voice. I think it was on WhatsApp, too. Well, yeah. some people that are defending him, including Bradley Martin on <laughs> uh, H H3M yeah, Leftovers with Hassan. You watched that video. I didn't get a chance to watch it. I what was, was mind-blowing the hoops that this guy was jumping through to try and, like, deflect from this. I mean, weird. Mm, very weird. Um, but he was, like, trying to say that this was AI-generated and not oh. real. Part of the Matrix. Oh, the Matrix. Anyway, let's give this a listen. A warning, especially this part. This is very scary to listening to listen to and could be very um, triggering for some. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I fucking loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. Why am I like that? Why? I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get fucked by me. Would you rather me pin you down and make you do things you didn't like, or would you rather fuck You didn't like that I was thinking I can do whatever I want to. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this fucking planet. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't fucking pass out. 
Chill the fuck out. Jesus Christ. I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? Ew. I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? Horrific. So scary. (sighs) I can't. I've never been in a situation like that in my life. I can't imagine being around someone like that even for a minute. And God, I feel just so bad for women out there who have had similar abusers to Andrew. That's just. To make matters worse, (sighs) Amelia got up the courage to go to the authorities and share all of this. And they decided not to move forward with prosecuting Andrew. Back then. Right, back then. She said that authorities expressed their apologies and said that the matter ultimately came down to, quote, the fact that there there is an ounce of doubt in the case. Uh. Um, In the documentary, Matt sits down with another woman who goes by Sally, who who has accused Andrew of rape as well. Sally started working for Andrew doing webcam work. And her first night, Andrew gave Sally two bottles of wine to help with the nerves of being on the webcam, she explained. He recruited me. I agreed to it. um, And he bought me a lot of alcohol and got me really drunk because I was so nervous. Um, She ended up getting really drunk and said that Andrew would have extreme mood swings where he would treat her really nice and then just completely change, become super, super aggressive. Um, And they actually ended up sleeping together that night. She continued to work for Andrew, but as time went on, Andrew started to show his true self. She said he would strangle her, and she even saw one of the other girls being raped. She walked in on it, she expressed in the Vice documentary. It's horrific. And she also went to the police, but basically said they couldn't really do a whole lot. And I'm reading here that um, the UK police, or the UK government, I guess, has the the lowest rate of prosecuting um rapist yeah yeah that's actually right. being highly scrutinized right now a lot of um law enforcement officials are being you know looked it's, into and some are stepping down so it's a pretty crazy situation that's unfolding here they all this is random but it also came out from him of course because he likes to tattle on himself here through his little online webcam service he had some type of feature where you could get on and chat with a girl like basically you know sexting sure. type thing it was him he was the one chatting with these men. Pretending to be a woman? Yeah. He was, And he said this? Yeah. What? That's odd that he would say that because that, you know, that outs himself as potentially, you know, whatever, fill in the blanks. Not a strong man. Yeah. Like, why are you sexting with other men? Yeah, he did it for a while when it was first getting going, he said, um, until he was able to get employees to take over it for him. Oh, I got to make that coin somehow. Yep. So that's what he was doing. People were talking to Andrew Tate, <laughs> thinking they were talking to some hot babe from the Ew, webcam. Gross. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, Sally waited months for updates, you know, after because then, of course, he gets arrested finally. And she waits months for updates. And after sending multiple emails to the police nonstop, they finally responded saying they were unable to continue the case anymore because there was lack of sufficient evidence. Allegedly, Andrew uses the same opening line to target his victims of young teens and, you know, young women and teenagers, which is part of his so-called perfect conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, An unnamed woman alleges that she was approached by Tristan um, and Tate and seemed to use the same formula when messaging women. So uh, Tristan and Andrew are kind of using the same method. Method. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another woman... Um, goes by the alias Gabriella, says that she was contacted by Tristan when she was 17, although she pretended to be 19 at the time. The first message was simple. You're beautiful. She said she knew he was using the same approach with other girls because a friend of hers got the exact same message from him. Typical. Andrew has described these two word opener as a decent opening line, (laughs) as he said in one of his videos. Genius. You're beautiful. (laughs) Amazing, groundbreaking stuff here. After this, he would ask women, why do I never see you? Where are you hiding? Ew. Gabriella said that um, she was invited to Tristan's car and to a party, which she declined, and it seems like the communication ended suddenly after she posted a video about him online. One of the last messages he sent read, quote, important people will never want to write to you if they see you do stuff like this. Just a friendly reminder. Shut the fuck up. God, he I is hate this so manipulative. Guy. He's the worst human. One of the worst humans Both ever of them are. this earth. Yep. Sick. Runs in the family. Where are <sighs> their parents? Like, how did they raise such horrible humans? Disgusting human beings. God. Yeah, where... What's... Yeah, you never hear about... Because they're not even that old. Yeah. Look up Andrew Tate's mommy. <laughs> She's responsible for this. Mommy. Emery Tate and Aileen Tate. Well, where the fuck are you, Eileen and Emery? 
I wonder if they support him still or. Oh, he died. Oh, dad died. Dad died. What about Eileen? Mom is. She says, I didn't raise him like that. Let's oh, see. interesting. She's upset with her. Okay, so I take it back. It's not mommy's fault. Maybe. Maybe. Don't know the full story here, right, but yeah. at least she's not supporting him now and publicly she says, being yeah. out about that. That's good. She must be horrified. How embarrassing. A source. This, sorry. Two idiot sons. A source says, I don't think she's happy with what Andrew says, the misogyny. Uh, she says that he says these things for the response he gets for the number of hits on the internet. Okay. So she's basically saying he's doing it for clout. It's like a character. Yeah. Okay. Well, clearly not. He's living this. I mean, we're seeing it. Yeah. Um, a source also adds, he was always going on about fast cars and what a man he should be. But Eileen didn't raise him like that. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh. Well, how do you end up like that? How did both of them end up like that? Right. I don't know. Another woman named Daria claimed that Andrew tried to lure her when she was only 16. She is actually the daughter of Romanian MP Kozman Gusa. I think is, so. Uh, That's his name. Okay. Yeah. And he's a um, member of the Romanian parliament and owns part of the television station Reality TV. She said he started following her before bombar bombarding her with explicit messages. She said she felt lucky not to fall for his hook, although some of her other friends weren't as lucky. She says, quote, because the sender was located in the Prahova area, I asked my former colleagues from some high school if they had somehow received similar messages, and three of them confirmed that they had. I didn't answer the message, but one of my friends, who was 15 years old at the time and was a student, answered. And so the conversation continued for a while with Brother Tate. Um, this friend kept conversing with Andrew for some time, and he bragged about his expensive cars and luxury lifestyle to persuade her into going on a date with him. So what happens next here? The Tate brothers will be represented by British lawyer Andrew Ford, who claims on LinkedIn that he specializes in representing celebrities and high net worth clients. Mm. And uh, Eugene Vidinic, Vidinac, I don't know who had previously argued that there was no evidence to support the charges against his clients, which is bullshit shit because we just literally watched right. evidence. I mean, okay, we're seeing this mm -hmm. right now. Also, Andrew Tate has been t somehow tweeting from jail. Yeah. And this was confusing because people are, he's popping off on Twitter still. So people are like, how the fuck is that working? Well, obviously it is possible to get a phone in jail. There are many ways to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's possible he is like emailing someone through a prison system or talking to them on the phone and they're m making tweets for him. Exactly. Putting them out. Or, yeah, he could have like bribed the guards, you know, to get them to smuggle in a phone or something. So he has been in custody since December 29th um, after the Romanian court ruled that the Taint brothers. <laughs> Taint. Who put that in there? Me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, would remain in custody for another month. Andrew sent an email to his fans complaining about the conditions of his prison. Aw, oh. boo fuckity who, you little <laughs> bitch. <laughs> uh, so this email was sent to his subscribers. He said, I will send you my I will send you my daily lessons from unjust imprisonment. They are trying to break me, thrown inside a cell without light. Cockroaches, <laughs> lice, and bed bugs are my only friends at night. <laughs> what is this? A fuck? This is like a poem. <laughs> Thrown inside a jail cell. Oh. It's literally a poem. Thrown inside a cell without light. Cockroaches, lice, bed bugs are my only friends at night. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> when Man. the guards bring me and to and from the courtroom, I stay absolutely respectful. They try to pour hatred into my heart. This really is a poem. <laughs> but please and thank you. Stick with me at all times. <laughs> <laughs> despite alleged or the alleged revolting conditions of his cell he believes that he is a model prisoner he's been mm. a good boy formal charges have not yet been filed against the Tate brothers and so neither have entered any plea deals although they were unsuccessful at appealing their attention uh, detention so we will see how things continue to unfold I assume this will be a story that we'll be talking about possibly every week for a little while yeah. um, or every other week um, we'll keep you guys updated on what's going on. This motherfucker, man. I hate him. Yeah, he, he is, is a an piece evil, of shit. evil person. Evil, evil human being. Very, very scary to see unfold. So we want to hear all of your thoughts on that and all the other stories that we covered today. Yeah. Um, I think we've been going for a while. I got to get home to my baby. Let my nanny go home. Um, if but. you guys have a moment, could you please head over to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and make sure that you are following us um, on those platforms. It really, really helps our show. Even if you don't 
listen to us through that, that's okay. Um, if you just download the show, it's extremely helpful and leave a review as well if you have a second, if you have a moment. Um, also, you can watch our show on Spotify, which is really cool. Yes. Um, and check out our merch. Mm-hmm. Keep it fresh. Um, I'm actually wearing some lights out. Oh, oh, yeah, you are. Older. That's great. Um, yeah, but that's going to be it for this week, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you on the next sesh. But until, until then, then, keep, keep it, it fresh. fresh.